a classic edition of Daily Bread. Abba, we trust you, Jesus. We praise you. Holy Spirit, come within us. Holy Spirit, move us. Holy Spirit, transform us. This is Daily Bread. I'm Father Al Lauer. We're excited about living in this Christmas season. Remember, Christmas is not over. We're just getting into it. And the Lord is loving you. Let's pray right now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's go to Mass today. Let's receive the Lord. Let's go to confession. Let's receive his forgiveness. Repent, Jesus, our life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Jesus, our love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Jesus, our Lord, Savior, and God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray today in the United States. We celebrate the feast of Elizabeth Ann Seton. Lord God, you blessed Elizabeth Seton with gifts of grace as wife and mother, educator and foundress, so that she might spend her life in service to your people. Through her example and prayers, may we learn to express our love for you in love for our fellow men and women. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen, Amen, brothers and sisters. This is the anniversary of the Incarnation. This is a Christmas season. And the Lord is pouring out His love on us. And it's more than you could ever ask for or imagine. I want you to look at our Gospel reading. This is Mark chapter 6 and verse 34. Uh, Jesus is out in a deserted place. Maybe you feel that you're in a deserted place in your life right now. Your marriage is a desert. Your family is a desert. Your work is a desert. And it's already late. That just means it's late in the day, but that could have some symbolic meaning. You might say, uh, Lord, it's really late with my marriage. If my marriage was uh, having problems, but we were only getting started, well, I could understand that. But see, this has been going on for years and years, and it's getting very late. Well, the apostles do not see how anything can be done for the people who do not have what they need, who do not have food, who are not nourished. And um, he, they just say, well, try to tell them to go out. Maybe they could buy something in the neighboring villages. And then Jesus says, I want you to provide for them. I want you. I don't tell them to go out and buy something. You provide for them. Well, they say, well, we can't do that. If we had 200 days wages, we we wouldn't be able to feed these people. There are too many of them. And Jesus said, well, what do you have? He said, well, we have five loaves and two fish. That's all we've got. He said, well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll work with those. And Jesus blesses them, breaks them, and has the apostles distribute them. And we have the miracles in the plural. It's good to get that straight. The miracles of the multiplication of loaves and fish. This is very important for several reasons. One, in a secular humanistic society that is already prejudiced against the miraculous, trying to water everything down to our limited human experience, uh, it, miracles don't compute. So people just say, well, there probably aren't any. Uh, But it's important for us to realize secular humanism is nothing but a prejudice. It's very unscientific, and it is wrong. And um, so it's important to bring this up because um, this multiplication of the loaves and fish is a prefigurement of the Eucharist that's mentioned in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and it's also been taught throughout the history of the Church. And so to uh, appreciate the Eucharist, we need to appreciate the miracle of the multiplications of the loaves and fish. You know, a few years ago, uh, some Bible scholars said, you know, there's really was probably only one multiplication of the loaves and fish. And um, that there are two accounts of that in... uh, Matthew, Mark, and I believe Luke. 
a big, it's a it's a doublet. It's just saying that it's saying the same, of talking about the same event only twice. Well, that you know that that might be, although that's uh, questionable. But then the next step was, we went from two multiplications of loaves and fish down to one. If you believe uh, this um, possible, but y- yet somewhat questionable biblical interpretation. Uh, then we go from two multiplication of loaves to one, and then somebody comes out. For example, Matthew Fox, who has been recognized as someone who is teaching falsely. And even Jean Laverdier uh, kind of insinuated this, who is a reputable Bible scholar, but sad to say he seems to be uh, kind of off his rocker here. Uh, they, Those guys and a few others said, you know, there not only wasn't two multiplication of the loaves and fish, there wasn't even one. Because really, what has been passed off as a multiplication of the loaves and fish was a bunch of stingy people. Remember, the Jews are pretty hospitable people, so I don't know if we should caricature them as stingy. There were a bunch of stingy, selfish people who didn't want to, didn't want to share their lunches. And the almighty, wonderful, glorious Jesus the Messiah said, share your lunch, and they did. And isn't that a wonderful miracle? Wow, so there wasn't any multiplication of loaves and fish now, according to a few people. Although that is a very strange, strange interpretation of the scriptures, possibly even a downright misinterpretation. You don't see that kind of interpretation throughout the century. So all of a sudden we got real smart. While the church fathers, the great teachers of the early church, didn't know any better. Oh, Lord, have mercy on us. Thank God for the catechism. That kind of uh, settles the matter. Thank God for the catechism. Now, the catechism says we not only have one multiplication of loaves and fish, we have two. So they're moving the whole thing back to where it should be. Basically, the revealed truth. In section 1335 of the Catechism, this is quite interesting. The miracles, notice the plural, of the multiplication of the loaves. When the Lord says the blessing, notice they use the word multiplication. They don't use the word sharing lunch. There is a big difference. The miracles of the multiplication of the loaves, when the Lord says the blessing, breaks and distributes the loaves through his disciples to feed the multitude, listen to this, prefigure the superabundance of this unique bread of his Eucharist. Yes, the multiplication of the loaves and fish is a prefigurement of the Eucharist, a prefigurement of the superabundance of the uniqueness of the Eucharist. And so you see how there's a certain erosion of the face, saying there's not two multiplication of loaves and fish, there's just one. Well, and then there ain't one. And then when there ain't either one, it's just sharing a meal. And guess what the Eucharist is? Guess what the Eucharist turns out to be in this warped mentality? Sharing a meal. Huh. That's all there is to it? What about the sacrifice? What about the mystery? What about the miracle? What about receiving the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ? Isn't that a lot more than sharing a meal? Not if your faith has been eroded. All right, section 549 in the Catechism is talking about uh, miracles. And it says, uh, we believe in miracles. The incarnation's a miracle. The crucifixion where Jesus died to free us all from sin. How could that happen? You can die, but does that free the world from sin? That's a miracle. The resurrection is miracle of miracles. And so in section 549, they talk about, about miracles. And in the footnotes, you need, it's good to look at the footnotes. 
John chapter 6, the multiplication of the loaves and fish are mentioned in the cross-reference in the footnote as a miracle. Well, brothers and sisters, it's very important for us to, to get this straight. You know, a lot of times, you know, things happen and we just don't seem to catch on, do we? You look at John's Gospel, for example. The first half of John's Gospel is called by most Bible scholars the Book of Signs. Seven miracles. And the multiplication of the loaves and fish is right in the middle. First one, water turns into wine. The second one, uh, the, sin, the royal official's son miraculously healed, or servant miraculously healed. Third one, a man who never walked, who had been sick for 38 years, is instantaneously healed. And then I'm going to skip the fourth one, which is multiplication of loaves and fish. Then there's walking on the water after that. That's number five. And then, uh, let me see, uh, man born blind, being miraculously, instantaneously healed. That's number six. And then raising of Lazarus from the dead. Pretty heavy duty miracle there, number seven. Now listen, now see if you can get the order here. John, John's first half, first half of John's gospel. Here we've got water into wine. A man, uh, a servant miraculously, instantaneously healed who is in critical condition. A man who's been sick for 30 years, 38 years, miraculously healed. Sharing lunch, walking on the water, healing of the man born blind and raising from the dead. Do you notice anything out of place there? Sharing lunch. It doesn't seem to be in the same category as raising people from the dead, changing water into wine, walking on the water. Sharing lunch? Come on. Oh, brothers and sisters, um, do you, uh, how could we believe such weirdo stuff? Well... When you're confused, you're going to get real confused. So, brothers and sisters, we thank God for the multiplications. It's a real multiplication. It happened more than once. The miracles of the multiplications of the loaves and fish. A prefigurement of the superabundance of the Eucharist. May we be intensely Eucharistic. May we be people of faith, people of miracles, and people of truth. Please write us. Let us know that you're listening. Our phone number is 513-662-JESU, 513-662-JESU. And our address is Presentation Ministries, 3230 McHenry, Cincinnati, 45211-3230 McHenry. Henry, Cincinnati, 45211. Phone number again, 513-662-JESU. On the internet, www.presentationministries.com. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.